Yeah, you, that you, was crazy. Dog, you done met some people, bro. Edit that bitch, man. Hey, you need to edit that bitch, cuz. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna edit it, but dang, you ain't have the game cuss every five seconds, bro. God dang, bro. Huh? I think I'm gonna keep it raw, though. I'll, I'll cuss too much. Yeah, yeah, you was, but it's all good. Sorry, but no, 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 I ain't. I'm sorry. Nah, bro, I ain't, I ain't paying you, bro. I ain't paying you, so I ain't, I ain't tripping. So I, do your story though, bro. Like if I can get, see, cause I do got some small kids that listen to this, but like your story is off the chain. Like the stuff you done did, it's off the chain, bro. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm gonna talk to Frank and Robin, see what we gonna do. But like, dog, you, that was a good podcast, bro. I appreciate it. Frankie Raw, man, how you doing, bro? Man, I can't complain, man. You know everything always move over here, man. How you doing, bro? I'm doing good, man. I just want to remind the uh, Daddy's Ball fans and, and people that love to listen to the podcast to keep on following us on Twitter. You know, we got episodes coming out weekly, you know, two times a week, man. And we just, the content keeps getting better and better and better, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. But before we start, man, I want to give a shout out. So, you know, we got the national podcast going, and uh, I really, really appreciate that people listen to us all over the country and outside of the country. I want to go ahead and get the top four, I mean, top ten states that have been listening to us all over the uh, the country, man. I want to give them a shout-out, man. Of course, number one is Florida, man. Florida, you know, they're always going to hold it down for us because, you know, you know I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm raised in Georgia, but, you know, I've been raising my kids in Florida, man, for over 20-some years, man. After that, we got Ohio State. We got Louisiana, California looking out for us, Virginia, Georgia, Texas, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Alabama, man. We only got two states that we don't have any followers, anybody listening to us at, and that's uh, Montana and Wyoming. So I would like to send a plug out. So for anybody who has some kin folks or some friends or something in Montana or Wyoming, man, tell them to listen to the podcast, man. <laughs> Tell me, listen to the podcast, bro. We want, we, we want the whole United States, bro. We want the whole United States, man. Who are you doing? Yeah, man. But let's go ahead and get into this episode, man. This is going to be a exciting episode. We have Michael Jennings, uh, who played with the uh, New York Giants and went to uh, Florida State and went to Westside High School, formerly known as uh, Forest High School. Michael, how you doing? What's up, brother? Oh, man, doing all right, man. We're glad to have you on the podcast, man. We're glad that you uh, ready to share your story with us, man. And we're going to just kind of kind of just go ahead and jump into it, man. You're from Jacksonville. Man, just give us, like, you know, your childhood, you know, kind of what it was like. Uh, sure. I'm just so uh, Duval County boy. I'm from Jacksonville, Duval. man. I, uh, yeah, man, uh, born on the north side. Uh, Washington yeah, man, Washington State, man. Right between uh Sutel, right right behind the Wind Beach, so ain't the Wind Beach no more, but right over there across from SA Hub, man. But uh yes, just growing up, man, it was so it is, man. I always I had a real good upbringing. I was raised by my grandparents. First started playing sports out on the east side, Cuckoo Park. And uh I just always had a love for the game, man. Fell in love with it. Alright, man, that's cool. What what sports did you play uh your younger years, man? Uh, well, I always, first, I was a Chicago Bears fan, back with Walter Payton and Frederick Perry, you know what I'm saying, so I fell in love with football, but, uh, just growing up, I played baseball and basketball, played basketball in the old PAL building, uh -huh. and, uh, give a shout out to Coach Brown, Coach Brown, Coach Cheese, all them thugs out at Cuckoo Park, man, it was just, uh, real good sports out there. Really that I went to summer camp out there. You had to be a thug out there. You had to be tough. You go to the east side. <laughs> once you cross Main Street alone, you hear me? Yeah. Hey, you give it. So you went to Lee. So you went to Lee Bull Heads, no? Huh? You went to Lee Bull Central. <laughs> yeah, man. Cougar Park. I mean, it was it was great though, man. Just just growing up, man. Football. I just like I always told everybody: if you're from Duval County, there's two things you gotta do. You know how to hustle and you know how to play some football, baby. So, so hey, give me the importance, man. What's uh, the importance of youth sports, man? Matt, can you imagine if they ain't had youth sports in the city, bro? Man, I think I think it just taught 
talk so much, bro. Like, just, I think just, just learning to work together. Just learn to be one accord. Just sports me so much, especially to youth. And just like, it's, it's, it's changing a little bit. It's tough to get back because nowadays, now that I'm looking at the youth and Pop Warner football, I mean, that thing is real serious. I mean, right oh, now, yeah. I'm uh, with the Florida Star newspaper, a photojournalist, and I get to kind of dip back into the community and look at the youth. And even though we used to play outside real hard, I think nowadays, I ain't gonna lie, I think they're a little bit more serious about that ball. There's a lot more opportunity and a lot more to get into right now when it comes to sports and football. I don't know if it's because of the social media or what's going on, but it's just a little different vibe, man. Yeah, man, I think because of the dollar, the book, bro, it makes so much money. So, like, they trying to find a star. Like, as soon as the star pop out, you know, if mama have a baby, they're trying to find that star, man. Because like, they, they, they want to know yeah, who that next dude going to be, like, real, real early. So, it's like a, it's like a big thing, man. A really yeah. big thing. Good thing, though, me personally, on a personal note, sometimes I think it has been good for our community. But sometimes when it comes to youth sport, I think it's kind of hurt it just a little bit of how much emphasis they put on you. I think a, a young athlete needs to grow and just enjoy the game All right. and learn you know what I'm saying before they put so much emphasis on and so much pressure on these young kids cause with all this social media and all of this um, exposure comes a whole nother monster when it comes to uh, a, 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 a 10 year old playing the game or an 11 year old playing the game it's just a whole nother world yeah, bro, uh, I, I I grew up in the same situation, same area you grew up in, same time football where it is, and right now I do think social media, but the difference between when we were growing up, you know what I'm saying, on the north side going on, we didn't really have no, these kids right now, man, you can get a, 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 a trainer, bro. Like, yeah. these kids are going to go to trainers. It's like from, with us, we go, okay, football, okay, now we're going to go to basketball. And the basketball, we're going to baseball. Then we get ready for football. Again, like, we kept in different sports. Now, you got kids that's football driven, football driven only. They go into training in the summer. They may not play any other sport. They may go and track, but they may not do nothing else, man, but just football, 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 football. And I can say that for my son, after football season, he's he, he, he going to training. He trained all year round, basically. You know what I'm saying? For football. So, so, the, so you do believe in, but like, cause, cause me, I look at eight on eight. It's a new, this is it's a new league they got out called eight on eight. Y'all familiar with that? Yeah, I don't like it, but go I ahead. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. <laughs> okay, me personally, I know y'all gonna probably, y'all ain't gonna agree with me. I don't know. I believe eight on eight just a little bit too much. I think. It's too much football, bro. Yeah, they're not that hitting. It's too much football. Uh, it's too much football, man. You gonna? It's, it's just too much, it's my too boy. Much. But it's you know, I mean, it does have some good. Well, look at it. Do agree with the seven on seven? The seven on seven, okay. I think, is good. It keeps it. But too much banging, you know. I mean, I am. I do have a lot of track uh, background, and I just believe in peeking out. Sometimes a child can peek out. It's always good one. Yeah. And I'll get more into my story later about me because. Shoot, uh, I uh, I had moved out. My mother, I was on the north side, but I was, uh, my mother was in the military. She came and came and got me from my grandparents' uh, house, and she moved me to Germany. So that kind of changed up a lot of stuff coming from the north side of Duval County and then going mm -hmm. over to, Ger to Europe, you know what I'm saying? But I had missed a whole lot going to do that. I did play sports, but it just wasn't the same. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? So when I came back, I moved to the west side. You know what I'm saying? I uh, ended up playing in Sweetwater, and uh, that's where I was kind of raised from the back. I was raised on the west side of town. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and it just, like, it was just totally different. Like, I, even when I first came to, I went to Jeff Davis Middle School, I was in the eighth grade. I got cut from the team. I never get Coach Saffer. Put, uh, grab it by the top of the head and sit by. I remember because I called. Listen up, what? I, I but mean, you know, like this throwback. Now I don't know if they do that now, but I went to the cafeteria because you know he was putting the people name on the uh, list who made a team. And I mean, it was a real 
see the issue in my life, just not making the team, because I always knew I was off. You know what I'm saying? I knew I had love for the game, but I guess he told me I was too small, you know what I'm saying? So I must ain't have it. I don't know. But but that's what kind of built that fire in me from right then to continue playing football. Okay. All right, so so you you saying as a youth, you went over to Germany. So I, I, I had my kids stationed overseas with me. So, like, give me a little, you know, synopsis of, of how was it in youth sports or over overseas? Uh, I mean, it was, nah, uh, it was cool because being uh, here on and raised on the north side of uh, Duval County uh, and being at Cuckoo Park, it was mostly all black folks. Mm -hmm. Just to be real with you, you know what I'm saying? I really didn't get to interact. But me going over, I got to interact with many different cultures, people from different cities and states and all over from everywhere. So it kind of opened up my eyes yeah, yeah. for everything. And to be real with me, it let me know down here in Florida, we play sports. You hear me, my boy? Because <laughs> I wasn't the top, I wasn't the top tip, but I always stood out. Yeah. And it's just something about the Florida. I just want to let it be known. It's just something about no Florida boys. I just got to say it. Now, Texas, y'all do y'all thing. Uh, uh, California, I just Georgia boys do their thing. But I just want to be known. I think a Florida athlete do kind of stand out a little bit. Just something about an uh, athlete from Florida. I'm going to just go on and say that. But that's, that's why we preach on the podcast, man, about the importance of a Florida kid. I know we want our kids to play for Miami, Florida, and uh, Florida State. But when a Florida kid go up north, he just a special breed. He shine, baby. He, he, he shines. So sometimes, sometimes it's good for you to get out your, your comfort zone, go away to some place that's going to treat you special because you're a Florida kid. And we, we preach that all the time, bro. We preach that all the time. Preach that all the time. I mean, we got the big three. We got uh, FSU. We got, well, I'm going I'm to go, I'm go ahead and say it big, how it is right now. Big folk, okay? big folk. I'm going to go and say it now, because I really don't want to say it, because y'all know I'm a Seminole until I die. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go and say it like this. I'm thinking the big three right now is Florida Gators, Miami Hurricanes, then the Seminoles. I'm going to say, we're going to see it in a minute. Then mm -hmm. we're going to hook up in, a, in one second. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a showdown in Orlando. Mm-hmm. So, so you, so you, so you, so you, hold on. So, so you telling me that UCF ain't been better than all three the last couple of years? Wow, yes, sir. You don't want to say that? No, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to be real. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Uh -huh. uh, now, 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 since we preaching and since we talking, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Get what they needed to do. What? They needed to win their last game, my boy. It yeah. meant something. I got because you. I got you. Yeah. They played, uh, who, what team was that that they played in the bowl? Was it all? It wasn't was Auburn. Because they beat Auburn last year. It was, uh, it was an SEC yeah, team. Yeah, Auburn. LSU. Yeah, 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 yeah. LSU, LSU beat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was LSU, and, and, and I'm going to tell you, it was the big stage, and I know, but if they would have, they would have solidified themselves as they, now they could have been arguably up in that big three. I got you. Nah, I got you. Seen, since they couldn't hang in with the big dog, they got to keep pumping a little bit. Now, they were all, <laughs> I get them pumped, but I was going to say the big three, then you got the uh, UCF, uh, UCF and FAU. South Florida. FAU. What about what about USF? Yeah, yeah, UF, UF you, no. I, I thought you was about to say you. I thought you was about to say FIU, U, UA, uh, FIU. Uh, so you think all of them on the same level? Yeah, I, I, I think UCF. Man, I think I UCF is up with them big dogs. UCF. Well, you gotta be. I know you're a Florida State fan, so you die, and your ass gave you that that understanding there. But we really look at it. You got to go, you know, Florida Gators, because they do have a good team. They beat LSU last year mm -hmm. at Florida. You know what I'm saying? And then you got to go, uh, you can you can say Miami, right? Mm. Uh, I can actually say you see them above Miami. Believe it or not, I can. Because they really got mm -hmm. some players, but they got, really got some boys there. Hey. Like, you can't just not have hey. them there, bro. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> No, dude, I said it just like that. Listen, there ain't no way you can do it. Guess what? I can't say you only smoke as your last cut. But what I can say and argue is, you know we done got, first of all, the head coach, uh, Taggart is in here now. Uh-huh. Right? Yes, sir. We got, we got, we got, okay. and then, uh, what was the last coach that we had at Florida State? What was his name? 
Uh, uh, Jim, Jim, Jimbo. Okay, fish. Yeah, Jimbo. All right. So now, Jimbo, for people don't know, I think Jimbo kind of, before he left out, he kind of made it a little shaky and kind of hard with recruiting and kind of messed things up a little bit before he left. So now, uh, Coach Thad got to come in here and he got to have a situation. It was tough. <laughs> and guess what? I'm going to be hard on Cub. Mm -hmm. But let's, 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 let's let it play out a little bit. Now, if, if it happens again this year, I might think about it. I might think about that. Uh, uh, we have had too much dominance. <laughs> we have had for one bad year, they just say no. Okay, we gonna uh, yeah, keep yeah, moving. Let's keep, keep moving. <laughs> all right, all right, we got to keep it moving. All right, so uh, we, so let's get into high school, man. So high school, what, what happened? Uh, uh, high school, uh, well, uh, I, uh, I went to Lee Forest High School. I know y'all, I heard at the beginning you said it was West High High, mm -hmm. but, you know, I only know it as MB Forest. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. We had some, some great athletes uh, on the team. We started off, uh, my senior year, we started off 5-0. and 0. We had some, uh, Eric White was a quarterback, uh, Jack Key, and we had some great athletes come up out of Forest, but uh, just so happened we just couldn't really put it together. Eric White used to be, I would never be Eric White. I didn't start, my, me personally, I didn't start to my senior year. Whoa, okay, uh, okay. Mm. I didn't start, me personally, I didn't start wide receiver to my senior year. I mean, for some reason, and if I was, if anybody listening to me right now, for some reason, that's what I was getting into about peaking early. That's why I wanted to make that point because I really didn't. Sometimes when it comes to sports, it's all about your swagger and your attitude. It's about your work ethic. It's about your work ethic, but and I used to work hard. I always worked hard every time I did. But it was something about when I got that swagger. And I'll tell a quick story. My senior year after football is when I finally caught it and said, you know what, boy? I think I got it. My senior year after football season, we was on the track. I was play, I was running track and field, in which I hadn't really ran track really like that my whole year. But uh, Coach Simmons, who was my wood teacher. He asked me to come out and run track, and I started running. I was pretty good at it. I was more had a, uh, a long stride. I was never really known to be a sprint or burst type guy. Like, I never really ran 100. I was always a 200, 400 guy. You know what I'm saying? I feel you. So, but the, but the, uh, what happened was, Coach Simmons, we were trying to go to regionals, and they were trying to put together the 4 by 4 and he put all these guys, and you know, I used to look up to all these guys so heavy. Mike Frager, uh, Nathan Sutherland, all these guys I used to look up to, and I really didn't think I was really better than them. But when he put us on that track and he said the top four is going to be our four for the four by four going to reasons. And when I looked up and I had with everybody, and it kind of let me know right then, like, Mike, that ain't sure one got the juice. Yes, sir. You hear me? I, it really hit me right then. You know what I'm saying? That's what really started. I ended up getting third in state that year in the 400 meter. It's either a parent, or it might not have to be a parent. It can be a situation, but it's a time where a young athlete gonna realize they the only one stopping themselves. You know what I'm saying? And you like you just gotta really just work hard. You know, it's a shame. It's a lot of people don't get what you got, what you're talking about, until they graduate. Like they like they like they be ball, they be a, like playing basketball. They be real real ballers after they graduate when they just playing you know as a grown man wreck ball stuff like that. But it's so hard to get kids these days to understand they the only one stopping their talent, bro. So it's, it's good that you said that. Man. It's good that you said. Yeah, that. man, I, I agree with you so much, man. It's so much like you know we said we can always turn back the hands of time. Yes, sir. But like you always say, like 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 you always say though, brother. It's it's always about your work ethic working hard and really being humble and listening to others. Most time, people used to talk to me so much about different stuff. But it's always about listening to your parents, mm -hmm. having that support system. And to parents, that's what's so uh, support. I always had a, a, a support system, man. That's my, my mother, uh, she was a world-class sprinter, and she is now a... Uh, a pastor and uh, hmm. a state representative here in Florida. And so she has always been a part of my life and always pushing me on things. Like, in some of the words, I got me a scholarship that year to Grambling State University. 
right. I was known as Eddie Robinson, who is a legendary uh, a legendary co uh, coach out in Louisiana at Grandma State University. And I was known as Eddie Robinson's last recruit. They gave me that. It was like, for some reason, it was like I was the last one to get on. And at that time, my grades were not as good. Mm -hmm. I really was okay in football. I did, I did okay. But my mother is the one who pushed and told me, uh, Mike, you going to be great. And she the one helped and went and found an agent for me and went and did it and a lot of different stuff. So it's good. The support system is what – what really means some? I mean, I see people even to this day, man. Just I see fathers out here. It means so much, especially coaching. We sit here talking about youth football, man. It's so it means so much when you when I see these guys out here and they talking about being a coach. I'm gonna be real with you, cause it's been so many times people like, hey, Mike, Mike, I'm coach. Like right now, I have a business. I got this stuff. It means a lot to step out there and say you said a coach in youth football. How much time you got to put out? How much, it means so much. I give so much props to anybody right now. That's why when it comes to God has made me this to be uh, over the sport. I'm over the, uh, the sports section and a photojournalist in other Florida Star newspaper. Mm -hmm. And even though I go and do the uh, Orlando Magic and I go through Florida State and I I go do the Jacksonville Jaguars. I make sure I put the same amount of emphasis yes, sir. on the youth sports. Yes, sir. This just straight from the heart, you know what? Mm -hmm. This straight from the heart, straight from the muscle. So, yeah, that, that, that's that's good, man. The one thing I I I hate a lot is that you know you got the Jaguars and stuff like that, but through the years, if you just say through the years at the time they've been around Jacksonville. You just don't see them come to certain certain parts of the city, man. That thing always hit me up, man. I'm like, why? Well, a lot of times when they got the the the, the pop one Super Bowl, a lot of times they they playing away. I I I understand that, but like on the off season, you just don't see them come to certain parts of the city, man. But you see them taking pictures over in Ponte Vedra or or um, South Side or something like that, which is fine. I got you. you can do some of that too, but you got to come to the West Side. You got to come to the North Side at the same time because. But the kids seeing the faces of somebody that's on TV who they got they, they got their jersey and stuff like that, it does so much to, 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 to kids, man. So that's one thing I always make sure that my son is going to do. Every time he come back to the crib, because my, my son played for Ohio State. So every time, every time he come back to the crib, he going to go west side, north side, south side. He going to go. What position he play, cuz? He play uh, cornerback for Ohio State. Okay. Yeah, he played for Trinity. All right, I'm about to go on. What's his name? Well, you know, I'm, you know, I, I be on it. I'm trying to pay attention. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Yeah, Sean Wade, man. But uh, but he uh, I, I make that's sure. That's a blessing. Yeah, that's a blessing. I, I make sure he do that, man. So how did you get yeah. from there to going to Florida State running track? Okay, well, uh, just like I said about the support system, uh, I my mother, she uh. I was, I was, so what I was, was at that time, my grades was not up to par in high school. Mm -hmm. As far as, you know, your core, you have to have, and that's why I always preach so much to the youth about your grades and stuff, because I had to go through it. Mm -hmm. I had the SAT score, mm -hmm. but my grades were, so what they made was me as a Prop 48. They don't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. And a Prop 48 is where they give you, uh, they let you come. And they say, we're going to let you come to school for a semester. And if you get your grades up, then we'll put you on scholarship. That's, that's what I was, the top four days. So I went to Grand State University, mm -hmm. Eddie Robinson last recruit. And uh, I did. I did good. Guess what? For some reason, it was something about that. It was a great atmosphere. A black, a black, a BCU, black college experience, one of the best experiences I've had, man. I loved it out there. I met some great friends. It was good football. I, I, I couldn't really pay this, but... And uh, I couldn't put on pads and stuff, but I still got to experience football in Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? Up under the great coach. And uh, anyway, my mama told me, hey, you need to come home. Hey, you, you far away. She just said, you need to come to Florida State. So what she did was, this is a true story. I came home. Like I said, I was third in the state in high school. I came home. She grabbed my hand. I still remember. It's some steps at Florida State. We walked up the steps to the coach. My mama went into Florida State track office and told them, 
my baby can beat everybody on your team just like that. <laughs> For real? My, my baby can beat everybody on your team. So, okay. So, I go out there. I do. He said, okay. I go run a 400 meters. They gave me, they, they let me be a walk-on. Man. Within a couple of years, within a couple of years, I was the team captain, and I was the number two all-time 400 meter runner in Florida State history. I ran 45.5. And we won the first ACC championship and uh, men's championship in Florida State history, and that was in 2002. So I did get my degree, and uh, it was just a real blessing. But so, so hold on, you guys, slow, slow up, slow up, slow up, slow up. So give me, all right, cool. give me, yeah. give me the difference in experience. And going to a HBCU and going to a regular, you know, university, you like like Florida State. I ain't saying HBCU ain't a regular university, yeah. but I'm saying just give me the difference in, in feeling of what you got from from both. Because uh, you learn stuff from both. You learn stuff from both. Yeah, yeah. If I had to explain it to you, because first of all, I'm from Duval County, and, and and mostly all my people went to find you. So I still got the best of both worlds. You hear what I'm saying? Okay, I okay. I to the right? Okay, so it wasn't it, it wasn't no it wasn't no different. Okay. <laughs> okay. But no, it was a difference. The difference was to be real. Mm -hmm. Was exposure. Mm. Was money. I give you a simple. Uh, I give you a simple. Grambling University, Family University. People always waiting on their net check. Well, I heard that before. I heard that before. Always waiting on a student assistance. I never had to wait for my student assistance. I heard that before. I'm at Florida State, baby. Mm -hmm. SSU. I ain't got to wait on that, baby. I heard. I heard. The, I heard the reason that that y'all wait. This is the rumor I heard is because they wait till the last minute to get every bit of interest off of that money. That's what I heard. No, I, I, oh yeah, yeah, they trying to get, they trying to get it. But hey, that bad folk for you sometimes. You know what it is? I'm, <laughs> what, I'm, what, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna be real, cause I'm gonna be real, and, and they can get mad at me, and they can say what they want, and we ain't even gonna go deep in this because, like, hey, we'll do another. We'll go deep into the uh, 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 p p uh, police brutality and a lot of different stuff. I am. I'm always in the community. Right now, if you come to Duval County, they know me all on my side is obviously Miller Airwell. And if I step up, I'm, I'm, I'm around. But also, when I'm around and mm -hmm. I do go on Florida Avenue, mm -hmm. or I do, if, I, or if I'm up on the corner, around a whole lot of, I ain't going to lie, I do feel a little bit, uh, nervous. I need to pay attention to what's going on when I'm around a lot of my folks. Common sense. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's it cool. is what it is. Sometimes it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to be negative. I'm trying to be positive. And I'm always, like I said, I'm always at that. But sometimes you you, you have to say, when, you, when it came to it, they say, Mike, which one was better? Damn you or Florida State? I'm going to say Florida State. It was a better school, just to be real. Yeah. Now, would I, do I, do I, do I, in certain words, do you have a better opportunity to make it at Florida State than FAMU? Yes, you do. Mm. Or when you go to these schools, so in some of the words, when you go to these schools and you're out and you're in high school and you get your grades together, when these schools are coming together, now you got UCF and all these different schools. Mm -hmm. These are people right now as we speak. Hey, I love my people. But right now, FAMU is going through a crisis right now as we speak when it comes to the football team at FAMU. Do y'all know anything about it? Uh, not about the football team. I, I heard they're going to the crisis as far as money, but I, I didn't hear anything about the football team. No, yeah. the football team is on uh, they on probation right now. Yeah, I did hear that. They yeah. can't get stuff going. So what I'm trying to say is, and it ain't just all about black and white and color and different stuff. I'm just I'm just being real. When it comes down to it, uh, the the scouts are not coming to Sam like they was like they need to. BCC, the, 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 but guess what? I can't say like, one more thing. That I can't say. I went to FAMU BCC last year. Mm -hmm. The game, it was one of the best experiences. That was my first time I went and covered it for the Florida Star. That was one of the best experiences I have experienced in a long time. I think that was probably my favorite game of the year last year. Mm. So it's got ups and downs. So you can you can go and I know people. Queen Gray, quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, that's my dude. I think he was selected third round. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to say you can't make it, but to be real, if somebody is listening to me, you have a better opportunity going to Ohio State. You're gonna have more exposure. 
the scouts are going to be there. You want to get out. That's the only way I made it. As I'm talking right now, that's the only way I made it. I was at Florida State University. I didn't even play college football. I didn't play football in college. It's because I was with the exposure. Bro, you preaching it, bro. You preaching it, bro. Yeah, you just keep doing what you're doing, man. So you walked up the steps, you ran your 400 time, 45 something, and, and what happened after that? You preaching it. Go ahead. All right. So, I, um, so after that, I mean, I ran. Uh, that was an AC in ACC. I ran a 455, mm -hmm. and uh, it came down to it. I uh, qualified for USA Nationals and NCAA Nationals. Mm. And Pro Day was coming up. Are y'all familiar with Pro Day? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I know. We know everything about Pro Day, but we don't know how in the world you run Pro Day. You ain't, run, you ain't play no football. I know. Well, I went in there because you got it. Like I thought, I was going to do all kind of with some hustle. <laughs> I went in Coach Yost. Coach Yost was the strength trainer for the football team. So he just see this uh, little skinny black boy with gold teeth in his mouth. Mm -hmm. So I said, I come in there and say, Coach. I said, I'm with the track team. If it'll be okay, sir, if I come run the 40 yard dash. So I go run the 40 yard dash. Uh, when the pro, when the pro scout came out to see, it was some of the great names like Javon Walker, mm -hmm. Chris Winkie. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 it, it, it was a lot of them boys out there, man. I looked up, I used to sit there and just dream about playing Florida State football. I just didn't think I was good enough. I hadn't played since high school. You know what I'm saying? You got Peter Ward, Lavernius Cole. Man, I'm talking about some of the greatest players ever. Come on, you talking about FSU football. It was just something about being at Joe Camel Stadium. So now that I'm getting an opportunity to come do this, and it's because of where I was at. I was at FSU. You know what I'm saying? So I go out there. I drop uh, it. The grass was wet, man. It was a crazy day. I had been working out and just uh, working on my 40. It was a coach by the name of Andy Lyons, a sprint coach, a female. She taught me how to run the 40 yard dash because I told you I ran the 400 meters. Mm -hmm. I went out there. I ran a 4 3 flat on wet grass and I caught the ball decent. I, like I always told you. It just come natural. You do all kind of, man. We, I just know how to play football. I play a cool park, man. You know what I'm saying? I play the Sweetwater Falcons. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I, 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 I play the Sweetwater Falcons. We, we catch that ball, you know what I'm saying? So I was just focused. I caught the ball. Um, it was a guy from the San Diego Chargers by the name of James Lofton. Are you familiar with that name? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Okay, well, you need to Google that. I think he played for the... Uh, but he was a, a famous wide receiver. I'm not for sure if he's a Hall of Famer, but he was in the ski of South. And he came and pulled me to the side and asked me, did I want to, um, would I be interested in coming to play with the Chargers? And I was like, heck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, all these people, I can't believe he really asked me. So I never get. I, I went with my best friend, man. We jumped up and down like, man, I'm finna get a chance to play in the NFL. I was so excited, man. James Lofton flew back out to uh, San Diego. He got my information number. He called me the next day. That's what he told me. What did he say? He told me, uh, Mike, I'm sorry. They said you ain't got no film. That's <laughs> so we crazy. To the Chargers and was telling about this wide receiver from Florida State. And they was like, well, we'll see. Okay, we'll sign him. We'll send him. And he was like, well, he doesn't have any film because he didn't play football. Like, football, he just ran track. And they turned me down, man. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, man. Just so happened, it was a guy by the name of Angelo Wright out there who was an agent from California. Mm -hmm. He had got my info. He hit me up. And then he was like, uh, he was going to help me out. And he believed in me. So uh, right at that time, I did get my degree. I had turned down NCAA and USA National. I didn't even go play. My whole dream and goal was to go play football. Master you know qu question. Um, so, so NCAA and USA National. We did a track episode before like, for high school or whatever. But you doing that? How much money is that? Is it how much money is into that? Of what you're talking about? No, no money. That was all still collegiate. Oh, okay. All right. So that okay, I understand that. I was still, I was still at Florida State. I was still, I had that was my senior year. So my senior year, this is my last shot to go pro and track. This is my last shot. I just came out of 
came and my mother, like I always told me, she's a woman of God, she's a preacher. Mm -hmm. The same way she walked me up them steps, she told me, she said, God say, you need to go try for the NFL. And I was like, mama, I ain't played no football, but sometimes you need that push in life. Sometimes if any parent is telling me and you want to push your baby, you believe in your baby, you want to push, sometimes you just need that. Yeah, because I know for my my natural mind is going to say, fool, go run that job. You a qualify, I didn't qualify for USA now. It's hard. People don't qualify for that. Mm. I don't qualify for these national teams and everything. She said, God said, guess what? And I know, you know, I told you, I'm going to pop that ball to that look. Mm -hmm. So that's how it kind of just started. And when Angelo Wright told me, he was gonna look out for me. I came back to Jackson, I hadn't graduated, but, so when it came to hustling and making money, I was in college with two, $3,000 in my pocket, and and I'm talking about as a young man, that mean a lot in college. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not uh, promoting, but I, I was, I had money. So I came out of Jacksonville, and back in them times, that was uh, around like, shoot, that was in about 2002. It been it was it was going down about around the time, you hear me? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just and I pre I, 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 I pressed to my agent, I need to get up out of here, man. Guess what he did? He didn't like because I wasn't that good of a star where he gonna give me money. He said, If you get out here, I got you. So I got out there. I flew out there, I stayed with him. Guess what he told me? I never forget. He told me once I got it, he said something. Before I came, he said, if you come out here and can't play no football, I'm going to send your ass back home to Florida. That's what he told me. He never seen me play football. He just seen me run that time and catch the balls out there. Oh, okay, yeah. So, all right. So, uh, okay, I go out here. Mm -hmm. And now I fly out to Northern California. He stayed in Haywood, California. His name was Angelo Wright, and he was known for getting... Uh, people in the NFL who was kind of like wasn't stars. You know what I'm saying? That was that was, his, were, that was his forte. Were, like, yeah, that was he. That was he was good at. Like, yeah, I think. Yeah, he was good at that. That's what he was good at. So when I first came out, he said, "Okay, I'm gonna take you to a junior college." That's what he did. So I'm coming out, and but you know, I was I had ran for the five five. I had I was top. Boy, that year, I was in the top five in the nation in the 400 meters. I was, when I say I was fast, boy, so when it came to that speed, it was nothing. You know what I'm saying? I was just wrong. I had, my only football experience, the last time I had played football was at first. For real. <laughs> so, my football experience to this time was Cuckoo Park, Sweetwater, because I got cut from Jeff Davis, and I didn't start until my senior year. So I came out there, and uh, when I went against the girl, that I just ran some routes against some junior college quarterbacks. I got in the car. He let me stay in his house. He told me, you did good, boy. He said, now get some rest, chill out. He said, in three days, I'm going to take you to another camp. Uh, it's at Stanford University. It's the Jerry Rice camp. So I said, okay. So I'm from Duval County. Not one of those old country boy ain't used to too much. I slide out this thing real quick. You know, I'm just going out here with these college boys. I don't know really what's going on. So I go in by the stretch and I come out. And uh, then all of a sudden I see Eddie George. Man. I was like, what? I'm like, I know that ain't Eddie George right there. Y'all know who Eddie George is. Yeah. Oh, he's for the Tennessee Titans. Y'all know who I'm talking about. That's Ohio State. You play for Ohio State. You play for Ohio State. Ohio State. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I see Eddie George. Yeah. I look up, I see J.J. Stokes. The guy who ran the camp name, my, what name was Raymond Ferris. If y'all can remember, Raymond Ferris, this Jerry Rice camp, Jerry Rice always been known about, I'm going to ask y'all a question then, since we talk. Mm -hmm. If we want to talk, if it comes to Jerry Rice and his workouts, if y'all know anything about history and about wide receivers are working, what was Jerry Rice known for about his workouts? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know what 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 he uh what is known for. He was always known for running mountains, running the hills. Okay. That was one of his workouts. He was always known for running the hills. Well, Raymond Ferris is the guy who started all this. 
but that but this is what I'm a part of right now. And I don't even know it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm walking up in this thing, I'm like, Oh my goodness and I see these people and then you know, people say, Okay, the Jerry Rice can't you know in Jacksonville I was always you know, they'll say, You know how the concert and they be like, So this thing's gonna be here and then you go to the concert and and they don't really be there. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> But when I walked up and I'm looking at Jerry Rice to get out that Mercedes, I say, I know I am at the Jerry Rice camp for real. Do you hear me? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. So, so then, I mean, when I ran a fair, it just so happened, I told you I ran 400 meters. I done clocked five. Just so happened, I'm at the camp. Everybody doing workouts. Just so happened, the work, first workout, ran a fair, look at everybody and say, all right, y'all, we gonna do four 400 meters, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what we should run. That's how I work out. Now, I done qualified for USA Nationals and all this just stuff, so here we go, we lined up, and my heart is a racing. I can't believe I'm gonna go run with Jerry Wright. Do you hear me? Mm-hmm. So the first one go, we, we go run in the first quarter, I can't pass Jerry Wright, nigga. Do you hear me? <laughs> I, can't pa- I can't pass no Jerry. So, we running, we come across, everything good. Run and say, look at me and say, son, listen to me. Don't let us hold you back now. You need to work out and run. Okay. I say, all right. The second 400 meters, I crossed the line. Nine seconds later, everybody else crossed the line. Can <laughs> you give me one time? I tell you, come. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, that's what really opened up the door for me to go work out at that camp in so many words. I got close with Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice took me in and really showed me how to run routes. You know what I'm saying? So it just made me, it's my words, my dream come true. I came me like just watching football. Now I'm around these people, I'm working out. And to make a long story short, my agent went and talked to the San Francisco 49ers. Jerry Rice went and talked to Oakland Raiders, but San Francisco the one bit first. And before you know it, I'm on San Francisco field with a helmet on with a trial, man. You like that? That's crazy. That's crazy. Like that? So between your mom and your agent, they got you there. And you and you and you perform. Period. And that's one of the main things go on that I can tell somebody that when you get to that level, it it's all about Performing, you said the right word. That's what it's about. Performing. I hear you, man. That's that's that's, that's what it's about. So that's that's what that's what all started, man. That's what when I got there and shoot. After that, uh, I had them did uh, I'm in mini camp. Mm-hmm. It just was a crazy feeling just to put on the helmet. You know what I'm saying? Then I, I uh, I never forget. Man with a suit came downstairs and he just uh asked me, uh on some real he asked me, like uh, would I like to play with San Francisco forty nine or if I wanna sign a contract? Man. That kinda all started and it's a long story, cuz, but shoot, I'm talking about that just the beginning. <laughs> so you, you signed a contract, San Francisco 49ers, and uh, yep. what happened after that? All right, so I'm, uh, okay, I'm in. Now, you know, if, if you familiar by this time, this is in 2002. So, San Francisco wasn't no shabby back then. Yeah, yeah. Quarterback was Jeff Garcia. Yes, sir. Right back was Garrison Hurst. Yes, sir. From Georgia. Yeah, man, G. Hurst. We got uh, 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 Terrell Owens. Ooh. Uh, J.J. Stokes, we got uh, Cedric Wilson. I mean, this is uh, this is back when the, the, the 49ers were on a playoff caliber team. That's right. It wasn't no and, rice pudding, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, so I was, I was learning from these guys. It was, it was good. It was West Coast, West Coast offense. It was pretty decent. I was learning. I was – training camp was different. I, I understood football was different. It was a different grind. It was it was different in high school, you know what I'm saying? It was it was real, it was professional. But you mm-hmm. know, I didn't finish that college, so me jumping into this was 
pretty big, but our first game just so happened was in Japan. We went to play the Washington Redskins, so now to just go up, now I went through training camp, and I got on a San Francisco 49ers uniform. I see these cameras, I see all these people. I'm cool with Terrell Owens, this is my dog. Right, I'm here, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I'm like, I can't believe it, you know what I'm saying? So the whole game that went by, man, I seen Terrell Owens making plays. I see, I can't believe I'm with the San Francisco Four because I was a Dallas Cowboy when I was little. So not just being just fear, I'm, I'm just in awe. But mm -hmm. guess what, that fourth quarter come up. I had been working every day with this guy, this quarterback, the third string quarterback. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and told me, son, you gonna make get me rich. That what he told me. We worked every day after practice. I was so fast, cuz I worked every day. Mm -hmm. This is the fourth quarter. And uh we was in the huddle and he said, I never forget the red right all go. When he usually when a quarterback gives a play, he looks at the whole team when he's giving it. Mm -hmm. He looked at me in my face, cuz, and said, red, right, all go. I knew it was like, in so many words, like, he could have thrown me this motherfucker right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> He's gonna throw it to me. I get out, man, I leave the corner about seven yards behind me. I'm wide open. We're in Japan. Everybody looking, everybody back in Tallahassee at the moon. You know what the moon is? You don't even know what the moon is. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest club in, in Tallahassee back then. Cause mm -hmm. if, if anybody listening to what the moon is, they're going to say, all right, Mike, Mike, I know what the moon is. Cause. <laughs> <laughs> this one of them, this is the first game. You know how the first game of the year, they don't do it. No, they do it now at the Hall of Fame game. Just don't happen to have the Hall of Fame game in Japan that year. You hear me? That's crazy. That's crazy. Man, I go up, I'm looking, I'm wide open, it's a pretty pad, and I look up, it's a dome. The lights, it's like up at the top. I ain't used to this, so I'm looking, it's just lights in my eye, and I see a shadow drop by hitting in my chest, I drop the ball. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I drop the ball. Man. <laughs> <laughs> that was the longest flight home. I have ever, it was already a, 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 a nine hour flight to Japan, over to Osaka, mm -hmm. Japan. And I had to go home and know my, all this time I done worked, every time I did, I done dropped this damn ball. I got cut that year. I, I didn't last another, I did one more preseason game, they cut me, they sent me home. It's just the importance, the thing that <clears throat> I want to I wanna speak to kids is that the importance of timing. Like some things are just, you only have one time to do that thing. Like it, it, you only have one time to do that thing, and you got to take advantage of that time. You can't can't be nervous. Oh, boy, you is pre now you is preaching. No, you can't you can't be nervous. You got to give it your all, and you and you just got to let it out on flow. And you got to understand it, at that time if you don't do the thing, things can change. They gonna yeah. see you home. Yeah, they gonna see you home. Keeping it one hundred. It's not. It's not. And hey, guess what? But they need to practice while they're young. Deserve yes, because it's a it's a develop to just be natural. But sometimes it's that pressure is something else. Even oh, just, we okay. were just watching. If you were watching, did you watch the, the 49ers just the other night? No, I heard night, er, on, er, everybody told me about it at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They told me that they, 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 they look. Okay, so yeah. you know. So now this is a pro player. Mm -hmm. so who I'm talking about? You talking about the quarterback? Garoppolo. Yeah, yeah, yeah Garoppolo. Yeah. I'm saying it right. Yeah. Yeah. Garoppolo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I'm saying this is a pro player. And guess what? You can tell. I was looking at him. He went right. Yeah. But he just came off an of injury. He just came off an of injury. It was tough, but you can tell he wasn't in that in Garoppolo. But the mind, you know, so Coach Hoffman always preached that mental toughness. Yeah, yeah, and and, so and the thing about it, the thing about it too, I'm I'm a bounce back to this. I'm gonna cut you off for a second, but the thing about it is, parents love for their kids to be comfortable. Parents love for their kids, mamas and and daddies these days. They love for their kids to be comfortable. They don't want them to go through any kind of adversity. They want them to, for everything to be nice. They want the fork on the left, the the spoon on the right, you know, the silverware, you know, whatever, all that kind of stuff. And the problem is, with that is, how do you go through those situations if your parents are always making everything the best for you? You leaving one school, going to the other school because things ain't right for this one minute, or because this coach working you hard or something like that and that's the problem man that's the problem but pressure you know what i'm saying makes diamonds bro you know what i'm saying so like bro it, 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 it's crazy and, and and parents have to understand that that's imperative important because when you get to the next level of college or if you blessed to go past that 
it's pressure like a mug, bro. It's it's big time not, pressure, not man. Just, not just sports, but this is what we're talking about of how important sports is for the youth and sports is for in life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything is not going to fall. Yeah, your way. Yeah, all yeah. The time. You gotta, you gotta you adjust. Know what I'm like, you, and sometimes in life, you have to have mental toughness about these deals. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, oh, for real. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. My life, you, you got to, you got to be, in, and that's what that, and this was what sports can teach you. You can trigger on, so therefore, everybody not gonna make it into the NFL. Gotcha. You right. You right. You right. But sports builds character. Builds character. Builds men. That's why a, a good coach. You will always remember a good coach. I remember right now, as I'm talking, mm -hmm. I'm talking about from Sweetwater, <laughs> Goodrich, mm -hmm. Goodrich, out there in the Armour Field, Coach Bones. I remember plays, dog. I remember plays. I remember who, how I hit a nigga, how I ran a nigga over, or how a nigga hit me. You gonna remember, and I'm about to be 40. You hear me? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it builds kind of, it builds stuff and it, it goes with you. And, I, and that's why, uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I love Jacksonville Floss. You know, we ain't like, we not Miami, we not, I know we ain't the best, but I, I, I love him. I ain't going nowhere. I see. It, it ain't easy here. Nah. It's hard here. I'm yeah, it is. Me, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, 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 it's, 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 it's hard, but it builds character. We all right. You can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Yes, sir. So give, give us that bounce back, man. How you bounce back? Alright, so, I, uh, I go slide back through all time, and it ain't hard because now everybody dang good. First of all, when you, when you on top, everything good. Oh, you know what I'm man. Oh, I might get in that mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But what happens when you get cut? Hard, bro. I don't really want to see you shine like that. You hear me? Mm hmm. When I come back, I'm a PE teacher at SOS Academy in Sweetwater. Give a shout out to Miss Mills, Principal Miss Mills. I uh, did get my degree from Florida State before I left. You know what I'm saying? I, if I had to talk to any of the people, ain't no way in hell I'm going to be in class. And say, you might well don't go to school. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I tell anybody, if you're in class and make an F, why? So you going to go in class, sit up there all year and fail? That don't make no sense. That make no sense. You might as well don't go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you might well, if you're going to be there, at least pass. That's all. All you got to do is put an like, alpha pay attention and do what you got to do to pass. But anyway, I did get my uh, degree. And uh, I was a team teacher. While I was at the same... Oh, hey, one more thing I want to say. Mm -hmm. Character is means so much more than about anything and building relationships while you're out and about in this world mm -hmm. of what people think about you. They're going to remember you. They're going to remember how you say it. Like me, I say, yes, sir. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. Always, be always treat people with respect. Don't be no, don't be no, uh, jive turkey, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be no jive turkey. That's right, old school. Mm -hmm. Don't be no jive turkey. In some of the words, have in integrity. Yes, sir. Have integrity by yourself. Tell the truth and be there, and it'll go a long way. Just the little small things like saying yes, sir. I'm talking about me as a grown man in the NFL telling the coaches yes, sir. Telling the ladies no, ma'am. Oh, it's so respectful. People don't know how far that'll take. Yeah, people remember that because people don't say that. I got gold teeth and I'm loud, all that, but guess what? I come across and respectful people that go a long way. Mm -hmm. A coach by the name of Jack, uh, Coach Stewart, George Stewart, what's his name? He called me on the phone and said, Mike, I, I got something for you. It was called NFL Europe. You hear me, Mm hmm. It was called NFL Europe. He got me in NFL Europe, and now I had, when I was a PE teacher, Every day, I kept working out every day. It was hard. I was in that grass every day when I went. I used to pick, teach the P class, and I used to go work out every day. George Stewart got me back in, and I did NFL Europe. Make a long story short, I played for the Scottish Claymores. I got cut. NFL is very political. Mm -hmm. 
sports is very political. Mm-hmm. They pay people a lot of money. Sometimes you might have a lot of talent, but your talent not gonna make it because of they got to get that people their money. So I did cut from the Scottish Claymore. Guess what? I stayed in contact with Coach. The next year came around, I wasn't a part of the politics. I got cut again. But this time, if you hear me, the coaching staff from the Scottish Claymores, they moved over to the Berlin Thunder. So now, the same coaches brought me back to the Berlin Thunder because I had respectful and I worked hard. Mm-hmm. I worked real hard and then messed around. I was trying to get cut again, but it was this white man in the stand. Belichick so saw I, you, brought you back to the NFL. Out there working out, is a, uh, court, his quarterback his name was Rohan Davis, played for LSU, and had just got drafted. And uh, they sent him to NFL Europe. He came to see Rohan Davis throw the ball and see me running back. So I had to tell him. Him. it was the politics that was messing me up. Bless him, man. So I skipped NFL Europe. I got cut for that team. Went to the New England pitch. They had just run the Super Bowl, bro. So now I'm in New England, but this a little different now. It was totally different. This was a real football organization. Do you hear me, Cub? Mm-hmm. Do you hear know what I'm trying to tell you? I have I have an experience on that. And guess what else? I was used to Toronto Owens. What? Oh, I'm gonna ask you another question. Uh-oh. Tell me something about. These wide receivers, Serena Owens, Ty Streets, J.J. Stokes. What about them? All the thing about them. All Hall of Famers? No. No. <laughs> they were tall. Okay, all right, for sure. Okay, all right, got you. They so, were big wide receivers. So you slot, you yeah. slot guy. You slot guy. But when I came to New England, everybody was small receivers. Deion Branch. Troy Brown, Bethel Johnson, David Patton. And guess what? They taught me how to be, get open. It was a different system. I fit in that West Coast was okay, but I fit in the system a whole lot better, bro. Mm-hmm. And I got you. I finally made the practice squad. I ain't get cut. All right, there you go. There you go. There you go. I, I finally made practice squad. I ain't get cut. Um, oh, did you, you? You was with the same agent, right? I was with the same agent. Agent the whole time? You never changed. Never changed. All right, so, uh, okay, so, uh, so I go, I, I score my first touchdown with the Patriots. Man. It was good. Just just being in the huddle and, and being with uh, Tom Brady and being with the million Patriots was about, I learned, this is when I really learned how to play football. Mm-hmm. But I made that team, but during the week, about week three or four, it's just about the politics, they cut me. They just said, what it is? One of the running backs got hurt. They needed to bring some running backs in. They cut me. And uh, because of that favor that I was talking about, the wide receiver, David Patton, I would tell him, I was going to go home. He said, son, you don't need to go home. I want you to come stay with me. Mm-hmm. So I stayed with David Patton. He was a man of God. Mm-hmm. Some of the words, when I first walked in his house, I dropped drop my bag. I'm going to watch the nigga business. Yeah, that's just the type of nigga I am. Okay, nigga, and I ain't no freeloader. Mm-hmm. I want to let him know off top, nigga. I want to let him off top. Hey. I ain't here on free and I appreciate being here. So I came, washed his dishes. He, I had a nice room. He made me pay rent. 
and he just wanted me to work out, and he said God was going to come through for me. In about five weeks, I got a call. My agent called me and said, the Baltimore Ravens want to work me out. Shoot, I was in New York. I already told you I already had that cash in my pocket for a long time, so I got goals in my mouth, mm -hmm. uh, a chain around my neck, and a Merkin rock on 20 toes. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So I done slid up the, up, uh, up the turnpike. You know, it, that's like going from Cassidy to Temple. Baltimore, New York. Uh, so I go slide down to Baltimore, and I went and dropped another 4-3. Because I told you I was on fire. You know what? They signed me. <laughs> so now, yeah. I'm in Baltimore. Now I'm with Ray Lewis. Mm. Deion Sanders. Mm. Uh, just, it's it, 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 it just like, okay, I'm here still. So you, I'm, I'm you met all these people. You say, now, 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 when they sign me, now all this is practice squad that I'm doing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Practice squad. Uh -huh. So then I go, uh, two weeks go by, somebody else got hurt, they cut me. So it's like, now nah, I'm very depressed, my boy. Uh -huh. I'm like, cause I know I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I know I'm fine. That's so happened. I had a blessing. My mother, who is an international speaker, knew this doctor up in Baltimore. That let me stay with her. All about knowing people. I wouldn't survive. I had to stay by my. I could stay up there by myself, but people was let me stay. In. People was nurturing me. They was pushing me. They had plans for me. Stay away from the haters. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I uh, I go stay with her, and uh, that get cut. I'm so mad, bro. And I, I'm, I'm up alive. I'm in this store. Listen, boy. Mm -hmm. I promise God, I was sweating one night. I was in the bed, I used to wake up and go work out every day still, no matter what. I'm kind of trying to cut, I kept staying in shape. Kept working out because opportunity favors the prepared. Do you understand what I'm saying? So don't talk about this happening, you weren't prepared. Mm -hmm. I was always prepared for each opportunity that came about. Damn it. I wake, I was asleep one night, I had a dream, bro, and I ain't want to talk like that, though. Mm -hmm. I had a dream. I was running in the New York Giant uniform. I woke up sweating. I woke up, got in my Merck Marauder, went to the gym. On my way to the gym, uh, my phone rang. It was an unknown number. I always remember. When, uh, for some reason, when a New York, uh, when an NFL team call you, it's always unknown. Why? I do not know. It's always unknown. The New York Giants called my phone and said, we want to give you a flight to come work you out for the New York Giants. I said, sir, I don't need no flight. I'm on my way right now. <laughs> I jumped in my car, car mm -hmm. went up there. I dropped another four three. This time it was different. Coach Kaufman was there. I know Coach Kaufman because I'm a Jacksonville Jaguar fan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Coach Kaufman there. I promise you, bro. I've never seen most time when I do workouts. Mm -hmm. It's only like two coaches out there. Coach Coughlin brought the whole staff out and just me only. Usually I go work out. It's like three or four receivers. It was just me only and the whole staff, bro. Coach Coughlin said about that time, boy. <laughs> yeah, pressure. Putting that pressure. And I dropped about two balls. I dropped about two balls. Mm -hmm. I promise you, the New York Giants signed me and shoot. The rest of my history. I took a part return to the house. I made the practice squad that year. I made that practice squad that year. I did one more full year practice squad, and then I went at the roster. I ended up coming from the number five X, number five wide receiver, to the number two wide receiver behind Plesko Burns, and I also was Dang. the second part return. And I... Got a Super Bowl ring. I wish I wouldn't got hurt. Mm -hmm. But through all of that, what I'm trying to tell you, mm -hmm. I got my pension. Mm -hmm. I'm here back and do all kind of living. And shit, that's that's my story. I wish it, I, I wish I would have been. I ain't gonna lie. I wish I would have been a millionaire. I wish I would have played about a good four more years. But I'm just thankful for just what God did for me. At least I was there to stand. Bro, all those teams and living out my dream, you know. Bro, you cannot tell me, bro. Bro, you like the Forrest Gump of, of NFL players, bro. Like you met all these people, bro. Like you know how many people would die to meet some of the people you met. 
like and, and, and work and you ain't just meet them you competed against them like i mean mm-hmm. that, that's a blessing bro like in your story man it's like you just don't know how much resilience you had to make it and do what you did like you you got a story for for the ages bro you can you you probably can charge people just telling your story bro like for real, like it, you, 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 you real resilient. Boy, you got a story, bro. You got a. You really do. You really got a story. Now you met. You, 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 and like you said, you said something really that stuck with me, man, for real. What I heard was how you said that, you know, as long as you stay, you know, you know, getting yourself together, you never got to worry about being prepared. You got to be ready. really big. You can't like to hear that. You know what I'm saying? That's real, bro. Yeah, dog. Yeah. Dog, Jerry Rice. Yeah. Bro, dog. That's um, a good quote. Yeah, yeah. I, I received that guy, though. But opportunity, I don't remember. Opportunity favors the prepared. And so in words, we all gonna get chances of like, man, I can't even kill you. And, and, and these things, like I say, about going on, like with my stuff, because it's some, because of, it's so much, I, I'm running through this story, but it's so much I can sit here and talk about high when I was at Florida State High. I got in so much uh, trouble with the law. It was pain. I, uh, one of my favorite uh, groups is Outkast. Mm-hmm. And, it, it, and it, one of the first things, that petty shit would have you cased up and locked down. And that messed up my life because after I finally did, I was, uh, after that year for the Super Bowl, I really, I tore my Achilles and got hurt and couldn't finish. I got cut from the Giants. But I went over the plate in the CFL with the, um, uh, with the Capitol. And up in Calgary, and it was such a blessed situation. But because of that little petty situations that I did from way back then, mm. it stopped me from. Cause uh, I heard you say you did a podcast with a guy by the name here named Red. No, not he yet. Yeah, it's coming up. It's coming up. We haven't done it yet. He's, it's coming up though. Not yet. Oh. Yeah, it's coming up. Okay, yeah, but well, Red, he is a uh, he played overseas yeah. and. When I tell you, it's so much you can do. You don't have to be. That's that's another thing. You yep. ain't got to be. Oh, all no. You can. It's so much uh, things and sports that we can all do. You know what I'm saying? That that you can be successful in. And mm-hmm. that would have been something that really helped my life. But because of that, the decisions that I made has got me. Affecting my life right now as we speak. Now I'm straight, but I could have been way more prosperous and way more right now than I am right now. Let me help you out. So, like, so for instance, I mean, we we talked about this on other podcasts, but we'll go ahead and jump back on it again. So, for instance, getting a felony too early. For instance, uh, getting a, a woman pregnant, having a baby too early. For instance, getting back credit. For instance, uh, 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 it's, it's a lot of things you can do that affect your life in the future. But if you just keep your, if you keep, if you keep on just, you keep on the straight side of the road and just keep pushing, dude. It's so much stuff you can do, and it's like it, it seems like it's the man or whatever keeping us from uh, uh, doing things. But at the same time, we got to get educated, bro. We got to get educated at a young age to understand if you do these certain things, you're not gonna be able to do these other things in the future. You got, you got to realize that, bro. You preaching, boy. You preaching. I receive it. I mean, if it's in the young people I had listening, I feel like life is like a book bag. All right. And you don't want to fill your stuff up at a young age. Yes, sir. You know, it's, it's hard to walk up straight and tall and walk the straight now. You don't want to put, number one, smoking weed. Oh, forgot about that one. Do I smoke weed? Have I smoked weed? Yeah, I smoke weed. Yeah. But I didn't smoke weed earlier. I'm going to give, I give props to, it's a comedian here called Lil Duval. Sure. You know about Lil Duval, don't Yeah. And Lil Duval smoke weed every day. You see him on Instagram, wilding. He doing his thing, man. I'm really, he's really Jacksonville's real superstar. But can I be real with you? Mm-hmm. Lil Duval ain't smoke no weed. He just got to smoke weed. 
Right. He, he just thought, he didn't, when he was trying to make, he didn't do that. So you don't want to put weed, drugs, yeah, yeah. sex, yeah. drinking, pregnancy. You don't want to put it all in your backpack and weigh you down when you can't walk straight and narrow and up strong. You know what I'm saying? Keep your backpack light. Don't put put as much. I wouldn't advise nobody to do. No, I know not the times don't change. Everybody gonna be all these just wild and out here and everything. But he tells you, I will wait and focus. Stay focused on what's at hand because there's a lot of money out here. There's a lot of money, bro. And, and I wish I would have did. I wish I wouldn't have had that messed up. I could have been doing way better right now. So but I'm still thankful. I still pull up on them thirties. You know what I'm talking about? You, you good, but my question is, how, how, how you going to get the bag and there ain't no room in your bag? You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to get the bag, but it ain't no room in your bag because you got all this other stuff going on, bro. Yeah, man. How you gonna do that, man? Stay focused, man. Stay yeah, focused, don't bro. Too much, man. Keep it light, man. Keep, keep it. Listen to your parents, man. Right now, go work out. Go play basketball. Go do this. Leave the streets alone. Especially in Duval County. Everybody cool. Everybody thugging. Everybody got a pistol. Mm -hmm. And you're not wrong with just this shit to get that money for his number. And I promise you, I can't wait. I'm finna do an interview with Lil Duval and Lil Baby. Ain't no way you don't need to put all that stuff. Lil Duval ain't put all this bag. He got money first. Now he's famous. Now he gonna smoke. And shit like at an old man. Fee, bro. I feel you, man. So, uh, so, 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 wrap it up, man. So, well, I guess you did say everything you need to say. I was gonna say you got anything else you need to say, parents, uh, kids, stuff like that, bro. Wrap that thing on up, man, so we can get on up out of here. Man, I, uh, I ain't really got nothing to say, man. I just want to tell you, I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. I took the time I, I really enjoyed just sitting here kicking and it brought back memory. This was good for me just to sit here kicking and it brought back a lot of memories. You know what I'm saying? I can't, sometimes I was just talking like, boy, we ate. It was like, that was all right, my boy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That was good. I was just yeah. thinking about that football and for, 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 for all the kids out there, man, have fun. Get them grades and listen to your mama and your parents, man. Get them grades and listen to your parents, man. Stay out of trouble and keep that. Hey, like you say, one word. That's how we gonna get in this thing. How you gonna get the bag if your bag already full? You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. You can't get no bag in jail. You can't get no bag. Yes, sir. If it's full, bro. All right, Frank Rod, take us out, bro. Yes, sir. Man, again, man, another one of these epic podcasts that we bring to our fans and everything of that nature every single week, sometimes twice a week. Some something you can dig into, put your thinking caps on, man, understand exactly what this man is saying. There's some way in life you're going to go through what he talks about. I want to say thank you, everybody, for listening. Follow us on Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, YouTube, everywhere, man. Anywhere you got us, Facebook, everything. We're there. That is all. All right. Keep it smooth. We out, baby.